Hello, Gem Hunter. In today's video, we are going to talk about very old ugly stones that could be worth thousands of dollars. But before we start, let me ask you a question. If you saw one of these rocks in the wild, would you say it could be worth millions of dollars? I understand that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not, because in case you didn't know, this rock is a meteor that traveled thousands of miles through space before it fell to Earth. And because of this, it carries with it valuable information about space, information that requires billion-dollar expeditions to obtain. However, it's not enough just to look like a meteor, as there are many meteor-like rocks on Earth that end up confusing many laymen. So in today's video, as well as talking about meteors, you'll also find out what the characteristics of a meteor are, so you can be sure when you need to identify one. You've probably never seen a meteor fall from the sky, or if you have, it's only been once or twice. But did you know that several meteors fall every day in different regions of the world? That's right, both during the day and at night, small meteors pass through the Earth's atmosphere. They are space rocks that eventually fall to Earth. And even though they're not big enough to do any damage, often smaller than a golf ball, some smaller rocks can just happen to make you a millionaire. That's right. But what few people know is that a seemingly ugly, ordinary-looking rock like this is extremely valuable because it's a real meteorite. Now that you know this, have you ever thought that the ugly rock you threw away yesterday could be a meteorite worth millions? Now let's talk about the tests you can use to determine if the strange rock you found is a meteorite. First of all, you should know that meteorites can vary greatly, but they are mainly divided into three types. Rock meteorites, iron rock meteorites, and iron nickel meteorites. Each has its own characteristics, and the following tests will help you distinguish between them and increase your chances of identification. The first test is to observe the fine site. A meteorite is a unique rock from outer space, which is why it usually stands out from the local rocks. First, look at the location where you found the suspicious rock. Compare it to the surrounding rocks. If there are many other similar rocks, the chances of it being a meteorite are greatly reduced as it tends to have a different composition and appearance from the rocks in the area where it fell. This visual analysis can be the first filter in the search. The second is to use a magnet, ideally neodymium, which is more powerful and ideal for this test. The magnet is then tied to a string and brought close to the rock. Meteorites usually have metallic materials, such as iron and nickel, that cause magnetic attraction. If your meteorite is attracted to the magnet, it will fall into three categories. The intensity of the attraction can vary depending on the type of meteorite. The first are rocky meteorites, which have a weak attraction to the magnet because they contain less metal. The second are the iron rock meteorites, which will have a medium attraction because they contain a greater amount of iron. The third is nickel iron, which attracts the magnet strongly due to the high concentration of magnetic metals. If the suspected rock doesn't show any attraction to the magnet, the chances of it being a meteorite decrease significantly. Most meteorites contain iron or nickel, elements that respond to the magnetic field, resulting in at least a slight attraction when brought close to a magnet. This magnetic behavior is so characteristic that meteorite hunters rely heavily on this test to eliminate common rocks. However, there are extremely rare meteorites that have no magnetic properties. These meteorites are made up of non-metallic minerals that hardly react to a magnetic field. However, these cases are so rare that even experts tend to rule them out in an initial analysis, as the probability of finding such a meteorite is minimal. So in practice, if your rock doesn't show any attraction to the magnet, it can be practically eliminated as a meteorite candidate, saving you time and allowing you to focus on the rocks that really do show the expected characteristics. To increase your chances of identifying a meteorite, there is another interesting test you can perform the relative density test. Although the name sounds technical, the process is simple and accessible and can complement the magnetic test. This test is useful for estimating the density of the rock and for detecting heavier materials such as iron and nickel, which are common in meteorites. First, you will need a precision scale for weighing in grams in a container of water. The scale doesn't have to be professional, just accurate enough to help you read the weight correctly. With these items in hand, begin weighing the rock as you normally would. Place it on the scale, write down the value of the weight that appears, which we'll call the dry weight, and keep this number in mind. 
Next, place the container of water on the scale and set the weight display to zero, making sure that the reading only takes into account the effect of the rock in the water. Now take the rock and carefully tie it to a piece of string. Holding it by the string, slowly lower the rock into the water until it is submerged, but without touching the bottom of the container. It is important that the rock remains floating in the water, held only by the string. When the rock is in the correct position, you will see a new weight reading on the scale. This number is the weight of the rock while it is submerged and is called the weight in water. Note this value as well. To calculate the relative density, divide the dry weight by the weight in water. This calculation gives you the relative density of the rock. This value is crucial. Common rocks found on the Earth's surface, such as granites and basalts, usually have densities below 2.8. However, meteorites tend to be denser due to their metallic content. Therefore, if the density of the suspected rock is above 3 or even 3.5 comma, you may be dealing with a promising sample. A density above 3 indicates the presence of heavier materials, such as metals, which are common in meteorites. This test is effective because the metal content of meteorites increases their density, making them significantly heavier than typical earth rocks. Another essential test for identifying a meteorite is the visual test, which requires careful observation and attention to detail on the surface of the rock. A common feature of meteorites, especially recent ones, is the so-called fusion crust. This thin, dark layer is formed when the meteorite passes through the Earth's atmosphere at high speed, generating so much heat that the surface of the rock literally burns off, creating a blackened shell around it, like a thin, scorch covering. To perform the test, the surface of the rock is carefully examined for this fusion crust. It usually has the texture of a burnt shell and may have small cracks, like those found on an eggshell. These cracks indicate the expansion and contraction of the surface due to the intense heat the meteorite experienced as it entered the atmosphere. If you see cracks next to small dots that appear to have melted, like drops of candle wax, this could be an even stronger sign that it is a meteorite. These melted details are formed by the partial fusion of metallic minerals on the surface, a rare feature in terrestrial rocks. If you find these marks, you may have a meteorite on your hands, which could mean a valuable item. Proceed with other tests, however, because it is important to remember that the fusion crust, although conspicuous, is not always present. This is because some meteorites arrived on Earth thousands or even millions of years ago, and over time, contact with the sun, rain, and wind wears away this layer, which can leave them resembling terrestrial rocks. In addition, certain types of terrestrial rock can develop dark layers over time, either due to the accumulation of slime, fungus, or even dirt, which can simulate a fusion crust. This can fool the untrained observer and give it a meteorite-like appearance. For this reason, it is important not to be too hasty and to continue the analysis with other tests that complement this initial visual observation. Another important feature in identifying meteorites is the absence of cracks, bubbles, or holes in the surface. Terrestrial rocks, especially those of volcanic or hydrothermal origin, often have these characteristics and can be mistaken for meteorites by those unfamiliar with their differences. Certain types of terrestrial rocks have irregular surfaces and small cavities that can give the impression that they are meteorites. However, these cavities, called vesicles, are found only in terrestrial rocks formed by the release of gases during volcanic processes. Among the rocks most often mistaken for meteorites is slag, a volcanic rock also known as ash or runoff. Slag has a burn appearance and often has small bubbles that resemble a molten surface. However, the vesicles are a clear indication that the rock is of terrestrial origin, as meteorites do not have these cavities. Another terrestrial rock often confused with meteorites is magnetite and its mineral variant, hematite. Since both are magnetic, they can attract magnets and be misleading. However, not all meteorites are magnetic, and this property is mainly characteristic of iron-rich meteorites. Sedimentary rocks such as pebble conglomerates can also cause confusion. These conglomerates with pebbles rounded by the action of rivers in time don't have the fragmented angular structure of impact breccias that a real meteorite can have. In addition, some volcanic rocks have a darkened and hardened surface that may resemble the fusion crust of meteorites but these are natural formations called desert varnish. 
a coating produced by the action of minerals in prolonged contact with desert weather. Other examples of rocks with a similar appearance include basalt, iron ore, and iron nodules, which are dense but do not have the characteristic structure and composition of meteorites. Even objects such as lead bullets and lumps of coal can occasionally fool the untrained eye. Close observation of the surface of the rock is essential as the presence of bubbles, cracks, or cavities, as well as a rounded or glazed pattern, usually indicates that the sample is of terrestrial origin and not a meteorite. Iron and nickel meteorites, the most valuable of all meteorite types, have a striking feature on their surface, a crumpled appearance full of depressions and irregularities. Imagine pressing a piece of clay with your fingers, leaving slight indentations. This effect is due to the intense heat and pressure the meteorite experienced as it entered the atmosphere, creating a unique, rough texture rarely found on terrestrial rocks. In addition, this type of meteorite is extremely heavy and significantly denser than ordinary rocks, which is a strong indication of its extraterrestrial origin. Another important test, especially for iron and nickel meteorites, is the window test. This method helps to confirm whether the rock is really a meteorite as it involves sanding a small area to reveal the inside. The procedure is simple. Rub the rock with water sandpaper or even wallpaper until you remove the outer layer. If the rock is indeed a meteorite, its interior will have a shiny metallic appearance, almost like polished metal. In iron and nickel meteorites, you may even see triangular patterns known as Widmanstaten lines, which are unique to meteorites and do not occur naturally in rocks on Earth. In rocky meteorites and iron rock meteorites, the interior will show tiny metallic particles or dots of iron scattered throughout. These iron dots, usually rounded and shiny, are unmistakable characteristics of meteorites because they are formed by the gradual cooling of the metal as the meteorite travels through space. To make them easier to see, you can wet the rock, which brings out the shine of the metal inside. By observing the presence of iron in these rocks, you reinforce the analysis that began with the magnet test. All meteorites have a certain amount of iron, even the rocky ones, and sanding the surface reveals this hidden iron. This iron density and metallic appearance are fundamental aspects of meteorite identification. If your rock has passed all these tests, the chances of it being a meteorite are high. However, for final confirmation, it is recommended to send a fragment to a laboratory for analysis. Special tests can be used to identify the specific type of meteorite, which directly affects its value. Common, medium-sized meteorites can be worth between $1,000 and $2,000. But if it's a rare meteorite, the value can easily exceed $20,000. And if the meteorite is traceable, that is someone has recorded or observed its fall, the value can multiply to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not bad for a rock found on the ground by chance, right? So now that you know the main test for identifying meteorites, remember that any suspicious rock could be hiding a real treasure. If you'd like to expand your knowledge and learn how to identify other rocks and minerals found in your area, I suggest you check out our digital book, Gemology for Beginners, which is packed with pages of information on identifying the most diverse types of minerals and gemstones. This material is perfect for those who are just starting out and want to deepen their knowledge of gemology. In addition, there are many other mysteries about stones found in nature, such as rubies and diamonds, that deserve to be explored in more detail. And to learn even more about these minerals and understand what can really enrich you, watch the next video that's about to appear on your screen. Thanks for liking and subscribing to the channel. Good luck, Gem Hunter.